There is something under your feet right now that is not only the backbone of life on Earth as we know it, but could help us clean up the planet, has groundbreaking medical possibilities, and turns ants into zombies. I give you fungus. Welcome back to 52 Books in 52 Weeks. Today we're talking the beloved Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. For a long time, we had no idea what fungi really were. They didn't have a category or even a kingdom until like the 1960s. What is a kingdom? It's a little bit complicated because we don't have international agreement because science keeps sciencing. Some countries say there are five, some countries say there are six, some places say we're getting rid of kingdoms altogether. I was taught that there were five, so we're going with that today. So there's plants, self-explanatory. Animals, that's us. Monera, which is single cell stuff like bacteria. Protista, which is like the junk drawer in your kitchen where everything that doesn't have a really logical home goes. We all have one. And then of course there's fungi. Those of you who were taught the six kingdoms, we just split up Monera into two. None of this really matters for the story, but next time someone tells me a fish isn't an animal, I'm gonna throw a biology textbook at them. Back to fungi. They reckon there are 2.2 to 3.8 million species on Earth, which goes to show you how much we don't know. From tiny microscopic fungi like yeast in your bread, to the largest life form on Earth, which is the adorably named honey fungus in Oregon, which covers almost 10 square kilometers. Fun fact about me, I am allergic to mushrooms, which I discovered at a super memorable business dinner. I will forgive them though, because fungi are a critical part of why we we're even here in the first place. Over 600 million years ago, fungi played a huge part in the evolution of life on Earth. Their mycelium, which is like the underground root structure, formed a symbiotic relationship with plants, meaning they could leave water and grow on land. Now the amazing thing is these mycelium network don't just transmit water and nutrients, they're like an underground network. And Merlin, which is a fabulous name, coined the term wood wide web to sum this network up. It's actually a really interesting insight into plant communications because yeah, they do communicate. If one plant is attacked by a pest over here, they will let the plant next door or across the road know through that network, which is amazing. Okay, this is super interesting, but this is supposed to be a quick book breakdown. If you don't have the time to read it, you should. So let's be selfish about it. How are they useful to us? I mean, beyond allowing life as we know it to exist. Some fungal species break down pollutants, plastic, oil spills, my personal favorite, radioactive waste. It's a process called mycoremediation. And this is where fungi use enzymes to break stuff down and then consume it to fuel themselves, effectively cleaning up the environment for us, which is great because we're really good at making messes. The humble oyster mushroom can break down petrochemicals in soil. Let us can't do that. Way cooler one though, Cryptococcus neoformans eats radioactivity. It's just casually growing on the walls of the reactor at Chernobyl. It uses the radiation as an energy source in the same way that photosynthesis uses energy from the sun. And the interesting thing is it can do this because of the high levels of melanin. Yes, the exact same thing which determines our hair, skin, and eye color. And of course there's more. Merlin talks a lot about how we need to do more research into the fungal world because it could help us out with a lot of the environmental problems we're facing. From carbon sequestration, which is where things lock carbon away, to replacing plastic packaging with mycelium packaging. But now let's talk about the undead because this is kind of creepy, super interesting. And if you've seen The Last of Us, you know exactly where I'm going. I haven't, even though apocalypse stories are my favorite, I saw the first episode and it freaked me out too much, which is pathetic, but here we are. Zombie ants. These poor insects are infected by something called the Ophiocordyceps fungus. I really hope I'm saying that right. This little unsuspecting ant going about his life, working his tail off for his colony, for he brushes up against the spore. Once the spore gets inside, it takes hold of that ant's central nervous system. So that ant is no longer in charge of his actions. Imagine being trapped in your body, knowing what's going on, not being able to do shit about it. And instead it becomes a pawn and this fungus is diabolical plan. The ant is made to leave its colony, go on a enduring voyage, and eventually climb up a tall blade of grass. When it gets to the top, it's instructed to bite down and hangs out there. The stalk grows out of its body, produces spores, which float to the ground, and the cycle continues. It's pretty fucking horrendous if you think about it. And this just goes to show you that life is so much worse than anything our imagination could ever conjure up. Guys, honestly, you need to read the book. It's fascinating, I have not done it justice, and I bet you never knew how much you had to thank Fungi for.